Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a while since I've given you an update on what's going on in the uh, garage fish room. Let's go ahead and take a walk through. Let's take a quick look. Let's get into it right now. We'll start here with the uh, 90 gallon. This tank is looking good. That's a Geo, Geophagus Surimanensis, putting on some good size and great color. One thing that's different in here is I did bring over a red spotted severum. This red spotted severum was in the, uh, was in the 55 gallon, but he was becoming a bit uh, too aggressive to the other red spotted severum in there, so I had to pull him out. The Surimanensis usually get into it with each other, but uh, seem to be, uh, at peace right now. This is a uh, AC Hecali. Used to be classified as a Geophagus. Beautiful fish. I'd like to get a few few more of them in the future. In the back there is the red shoulder being being shy as usual. He's put on some good size. The back of the tank it's hard to tell but he definitely has some good size. Here's my little runt of a uh, green tear. Cute little fish, putting on some good color. Jerry over at Jerry's Fish Room offered to send me a larger green tear. Just not sure where I'd put them, but uh, I'm very tempted to accept the offer. Beautiful fish. And I've heard they can get along with each other. Electric Blue Acara, looking great. Picked him up from a local fish keeper that is moving and needed to uh, find a new home for some fish along with all those baby plecos that I have. Let's go around the 90 gallon back here to the 29. If you're a, a Patreon supporter of the channel, you've already been updated on the, uh, on the fish room. I did a separate update for uh, the Patreon members. You can see this tank is looking good. This was the first pagoda snail that I got. And now I've got a whole bunch of them. Each one with its own unique pattern. Very, very pretty. Here's some barbs. I've thought about shutting this tank down and uh, putting those barbs in the 29. Just don't know if they would be nippy or if their little uh, baby would get eaten by one of the other fish. That's the sole survivor of uh, some fry they had. Didn't even, know they, didn't, even, didn't even know they had laid eggs. Off to the side here is my bed of duplex. I keep it, I keep it kind of dim, but I'll go ahead and brighten it up a little bit for the video. That's much better than I normally keep it. Mr. Mustard Gas, the second. Beautiful electric blue colors. Down here we have a fish my daughter named Picasso. He does look like a painter's palette. Picked him up from KG Tropicals. Lisa loves her better. Sent me a good one. I wanted something with a little red. I was looking more for a koi, but this one really uh, turned out to be quite spectacular. Love the contrasting blue dorsal. It's like, some, like they took the dorsal of another fish and put it on them. Sometimes they, they uh, will face off right here at the divider in the tank. They can kind of sense that the other one is over there. Doesn't seem to be really a problem. I keep this tank uh, Oh, about 78 to 80 degrees. Has a lot of, uh, has some wood in it, some almond leaves, little pieces of bark, things that uh, supposedly bettas enjoy having. And the tank is, has a very low flow with that, with that uh, she say 500, that Shark 500 Pro back there. 
I have it really turned down, so it's a uh, it's a real low flow setup, which better appreciate right with all those big fins. They don't want to get blown around. Eventually, this piece of wood up here is going to become soaked enough and it'll settle down. But for now, it's just sitting up there at the top, floating. It's something I found locally. Same time I found the the big piece of wood that's in the uh, in the 210 gallon. Right across from this, we have the uh, the 300. You're getting a long view of the 300. It's got these uh, outputs up here, these lock line. You can bend them and point them in any direction you want. I like breaking up the surface, create a lot of oxygen for these fish. They need it, being so active and so large. They need lots of O2. If this is the first time you've been to the channel, this is a seven foot across tank and it has 300, 300 gallons and has a sump underneath it, just a just a 40 gal gallon breeder and an FX6, Fluval FX6 with that big pre-filter you see back there. And as you can see, these fish are thriving. I recently brought over the uh, eye biter. You can see him back here in the corner. I was fattening him up in the 55, getting him confident, letting him get a little bit of swagger. And now here he is in the 300. Doesn't have a uh, tremendous amount of fin damage or damage to the side. So I think, I think they pretty much accepted him. I was a little bit afraid that the uh, that some of the fish might attack him because I put him in by himself. I was going to wait and get some other cichlids and add them with other cichlids, but uh, that wasn't uh, working out. So you see the Strigatus back there. The Strigatus is like a cousin of the uh, eye biter. I was concerned that the Strigatus would be similar enough that he would want to attack the eye biter. And he's much, much beefier, much bigger. But he doesn't seem to be that interested in him. I thought it was that Strigatus that gave the last eye biter a hard time. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe he's mellowed out. Who knows? Miracles happen. The substrate of this tank is primarily aragonite crushed coral. There's also crushed coral in the sump along with a, a whole bunch of uh, Sara biomedia and very large four inch wide, three four inch wide sponges, matten sponges, along with that Ciporax media from, uh, from Sara. So here's the 210 and take a look at that Salvini. Kind of hiding in the corner. A little dark back there. Wait till he comes out. Oh, there he goes. This is that big giant piece of wood I found at a local lake. Had to cut it into two pieces. This was actually attached to that large piece going across the middle. Very nice piece of wood. Really like it. Spent a lot of time cleaning it, making it tank safe. And then when I put it in, I had no problems with it. Didn't really even have any tannins. That's a female Nicaragua right there. Female Nicaragua. 
who likes to get into it with the fire mouth from time to time. Oh, there she goes. Fire mouth will run away sometimes, but sometimes he'll stand his ground and the lip lock. Oscars are doing great. Red Tiger Oscar and a Red Tiger Albino Oscar. I thought it was a lemon at first, but it's a Red Tiger Albino. Look at the size of that vieja. It's got to be pushing over 10 inches. Kind of shy. There's female Jack Dempsey down there. Also tends to be very mellow and shy. Doesn't get into it with anybody, but if anybody gets into it with him, he'll hold his ground. A couple chocolate cichlids in here as well. And there's also a, uh, a pleco. I've got caves and a pleco cave, but the pleco likes to stay right there in between those, right there where the wood separates out. That's where the pleco likes to hang out. This has a sump on it. A lot of pea gravel down here, as well as some of the aragonite left over from the prior tank. And some uh, large river, river rocks. That and the pea gravel I picked up at a local, just a, a place where you can buy landscaping materials. And there's a, a pre-filter there, and that's on a Sunsun 704B that I've added to this tank, and that is running, running really, really well. There's also a real strong power head on here. It's 3,500 3, uh, gallons per hour, and it's on, a, it's on a timer. So it's not running all the time. I don't want it blowing the fish around. I just love how they're curious, and they, they follow me. They're, they're shy, but yet they follow me around. It's kind of cute. Here's a little Pleco tank. They're so small, really hard to see what's going on. And if I get anywhere near the tank, they all disappear inside that piece of wood, which is hollow. So this is the 55 gallon that the uh, eye biter was in. It's empty now. So I'm gonna try and get a hold of some more African cichlids and let them put on some size in there and then move them over to the 300. And this tank here, just has this red spotted Severum who was being picked on by the other one. This one's very subdominant. I was afraid that uh, he or she was gonna get killed. So I took the, uh, the dominant one out and left this one alone. So he's got the run of the tank. There's also an armored catfish in here somewhere that makes a tremendous mess. You can see the, the tail back there between the wood and the heater. You can see that long tail of the armored catfish. So that's pretty much all that's going on in here. You've got a full update. The two moves, of course, were moving this guy, red spotted Severum, and the uh, and the eye biter. Both of those fish were moved. Well, that's the update. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any tips, suggestions, or any aspect of the fish room that you'd like to see or have me talk more about, just go ahead and comment below and I'll, uh, I'll try to get into it in the next fish room update. And we'll talk about the fish room, fish, food, filtration, and everything else during the uh, Saturday live stream. That's the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Saturdays, 11 a.m. Central, that's 9 a.m. Pacific, and noon Eastern. And if you'd like to support the channel, be sure to give you, uh, the video a uh, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and do consider becoming a monthly supporter uh, and uh, join the Garage Gang by becoming a Patreon monthly supporter. It starts for as little as $3 a month. Details are in the description below the video. All right, thank you my friends for tuning in and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.